Welcome back to Stroll Radio, your A through Z, covering the LGBT, LMNOP, and everyone in between show. Imagine you and your significant other, your partner, the person you wake up next to every morning. Imagine one day there's a tragic accident and suddenly that person is not there anymore. Your world is turned upside down and naturally you start to think about, you know, the funeral, what's happened, or hoping that your friends, your family will be there to help make it better. But what happens when you're not allowed to even go to the funeral? What happens when your partner's belongings are ripped away and the plans the plans that you both set together is now just a thought. Our next guest, Shane Bitney Crone, suffered through that exact hypothetical what ifs, and the only way he knew how to reach out was to make a video that spiraled and, and spawned into three million hits. And I wouldn't even say hits, three million hearts. Let's welcome Shane Bitney Crone to Swirl Radio. Shane, welcome to Swirl. Hi, thank you so much for having me. So, everyone here at Swirl, of course, we're absolutely sorry for your loss, and I, I can't even imagine. And uh, through you know your your video literally had my whole world. Not I can't even see my family and my friends, but my entire world crying. Wow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so tell us what happened when you received the news about Tom. Um, were you with Tom when he fell from the rooftop? Yeah, I actually wasn't. I wasn't with him. It was one of those days where you know in a relationship sometimes you just need a little space apart. Um, so that day we actually decided to do separate things. Um, so he was with one of our best friends, and I was actually at home when it happened. Did you get a phone call from a friend, uh, the yeah. hospital? Yeah, the friend that was with him contacted me to you know let me know what had happened. And you know the ironic thing was is Tom and I had actually just been texting, um, you know, like minutes before it happened, and I was you know making sure that. You know, he stayed away from the edge because we'd been up on the roof many times, and I'm, you know, kind of paranoid. But he assured me that he would stay away from the edge, and then, you know, then I got the phone call. And w- did you rush to the hospital right away? And, yeah. Uh, and what was it like at the hospital? Um, they treat you just exactly what we initially think that, you know, they're supposed to treat you as his partner? No. Um, you know, the, the nurses overall were nice, but it was very hard to, to find out anything that was going on. Um, you know, at that point, I didn't know how bad it was because, you know, you, you still don't think, like, the, you know, you don't go to that place where you think that, you know, he actually didn't make it. Um, but it took, you know, like almost like an hour just to have someone come in and kind of explain what was happening. And, uh, you know, but legally they, they couldn't tell me really too much information because we're not, you know, legally anything. Tom and I weren't. So, you know, it was almost like I was just a friend that was at the hospital trying to, to get answers. I can't, I can't even imagine that feeling of not knowing and no one's telling you anything. I mean, just gossip about myself and uh, people talking about me in general frustrates me. Right. Uh, in the video, we learned, uh, you know, um, once you found out that Tom had passed away, his mother had flown out and she, she basically started just going through his bank accounts, his belongings, and yeah, how, what was I mean, that like? It was it was kind of, you know, it was all, already shocking, just uh, the sudden loss, and then um, for her to come, and I wanted to be respectful of the fact that it is her son that she lost, and, um, you know, I know that she was kind of going through the shock herself, but at the same time, um, you know, she actually had come to visit us over the, the years, uh, and I thought that she finally kind of started to accept us, uh, she never apologized for what happened when he came out to the family, but either way, when she came and she started asking about bank accounts and, you know, planning the funeral uh, and, you know, not asking me my input, and I just, it, it's almost like, I, yes, I could have fought back and I could have, you know, really tried to, to, to argue with her and kind of get my way with it all, but, at, you know, I knew, though, that legally there's nothing I could do or say because she was the one that, you know, had the power. Um, so it was, it was upsetting, but I just, you know, again, I wanted to, to do what I could, so, you know, she was okay. Now, you and Tom lived in uh, California, right? And so right. for a short period of time in 2008, um, gays and lesbians were able to marry, but, of course, now we're in that limbo period. Did you and Tom ever ever thought of getting married or plan to? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely something that we wanted to do, um, you know, and when it was legal for that short period, we assumed that it would remain legal. <laughs> um, 
so we just felt like, okay, well, there's no need to just do it at that moment. It was towards the beginning of our relationship. Um, but of course, like looking back, I wish that we would have, you know, gotten married then. Uh, and you know, in California, you can you can you know do like a domestic partnership. But you know, still as I'm kind of learning all this stuff that without marriage, like recognized on like a federal level, there's you know like a, a thousand protections that come along with marriage that you don't have with a domestic partnership. So, um, you know, and that's that's one thing with like making the video is like, look, you know, if we would have been married. You know, a lot of things would have been different, and I would have been able to honor his wishes. But at the same time, it's a lesson that I learned that, you know, well, you know, we could have at least met with an attorney and had documents prepared to kind of plan for stuff like this. But when, you know, we were young in our 20s, like, I just never anticipated that I would actually lose him. And you guys shared a home, you shared a business, um, right. all of it, just like pretty much a married couple? Right. Yeah, no, I mean, we, you know, we like kind of did everything that... <laughs> you know, normal couples do. And, you know, all the more reason that you should, you know, we should have kind of planned ahead. But, you know, you don't want to have those conversations. You don't want to say, like, well, you know, if you died, like, would you want to be buried or, like, cremated? Where would you want to, you know, have your cremains go? Just all those awkward conversations. But, um, you know, I wish we would have had them. Absolutely. And it's funny you say normal couples. It's like, what do normal couples do? Um, I know. Grilled cheese like, sandwiches? <laughs> I know, exactly. It's like, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, that's where our country's at. Um, Shane, we're going to go to a quick break, but we'll be back with you. And we, we definitely want to talk about a, a new exciting project that you have coming up and just in what ways that we can help you cope with your loss. So you'll stay with us? Yes. Thank you. We'll be back after the break. So stay with us. Shane, coming up next.